The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them the light has shone. There is so much light around at Christmas. Fairy lights in our trees and around our gardens, brightly shining stars, shiny angels, and, and on our Christmas cards, there's little pictures of Mary, Joseph and Jesus, and they often have shiny heads, lights coming out of their heads, halos. And now I don't think anyone believes they actually had shiny heads, but in art, the halos express a deep truth. That in these three people, through what they are doing and who they are, light is coming into the world. Light that shines in the darkness. So Christmas this year, what does that, what does that light mean to you? What... What does that light have to do with the baby in the manger and how does that illuminate your life? Because we've been living through a pretty dark time. And the darkness has touched each of us in different ways. I wonder how has it touched you? What has it meant to you? What are the areas of your life where you have felt that you have been missing out on light? The pandemic has certainly diminished our capacity to plan for our future, even to plan the next week. But I think the greatest darkness for most of us has been the diminished capacity to connect with the people we love. We know what it's like to walk in darkness, like that prophet said, the people who lived in the land of deep darkness. We know what that's like. So we are ready to hear the good news of Christmas, about light shining into our darkness, into all darkness. Light that has come into our darkness because a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders. He is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. How is it that the birth of a baby can bring that much light into the world? I mean, babies are very cute and all, but lots of babies are born every day. Why is this one so shiny? Why is this one so full of light for the world? Well, the prophet Isaiah was writing for people who were desperate for God to turn up, for God to turn up and fix things, desperate to see the face of God, desperate for God to come into the dark struggle of their lives and bring light. And Isaiah says, that is going to happen one day with the birth of a baby. Behold your God, the Gospels say. Behold your God lying there with a nappy on, crying for his mother to feed him and hold him and comfort him. Now that might not seem very reassuring at first. We want God to be wise enough to understand all things and strong enough to change all things, to make everything right. Babies are cute, but they are not wise and they are not strong. What is the good of such a God, a baby God? Well, this is so surprising and confronting that it turns everything upside down, doesn't it? Humans tend to feel vulnerable before God because we're afraid that God might be angry with us, might be disappointed with us, 
Thousands of generations of humans have worried about the possibility of facing judgment before a scrupulous, uncompassionate God. So what does God do to overturn that fear? The craziest thing, God turns up as a baby, vulnerable, needy, naked. Now remember what God did when Adam and Eve in the garden ate the fruit that made them ashamed of their nakedness. Do you remember that story from the Garden of Eden? God was grieved that this great burden of shame had come upon the human spirit. Shame that has continued to be a burden that blocks out light from even the brightest lives. Adam and Eve had opened a door and let shame in. When that happened, what did God do? Do you remember the story? Well, God saw that their nakedness troubled them and God made clothes for them. God responded to their vulnerability with compassion, not with anger. And now, when the right time had come, God comes to us. And this time it is God who is naked. Naked, needy, and vulnerable. <clears throat> when God turned up, it was not with thunder and lightning and great displays of power. God turned up in vulnerability. And I'd like to share some words from Brene Brown because I know that a lot of people are drawn to her teaching on vulnerability and because it really does help us to understand what God showing up in vulnerability means and why that is such a bright light for the world. Firstly, it's because vulnerability is a prerequisite for love. As Brene Brown says, we cultivate love when we allow our most vulnerable and powerful selves to be deeply seen and known. And when we honour the spiritual connection that grows from that offering with trust, respect, kindness and affection. Love is not something we give or get, it is something we nurture and grow. You see, God doesn't seek a one-sided relationship with humanity or with any of us as individuals. God chose to be known in nakedness, neediness, vulnerability. That vulnerability is an invitation into genuine loving relationship between the creator and the creation. God showed up as a needy baby because God seeks connection with us. Brene Brown def defines connection as the energy that exists between people when they feel seen, heard and valued. When they can give and receive without judgment. And when they derive sustenance and strength from the relationship. Vulnerability is the birthplace of love, belonging, joy, courage, empathy and creativity. It is the source of hope empathy, accountability, and authenticity. If we want greater clarity in our purpose or deeper and more meaningful spiritual lives, vulnerability is the path. And that is what God wants with us. So God chose the path of vulnerability. Staying vulnerable is a risk we have to take if we want to experience connection. It is the risk that God took to come to humanity naked, needy and vulnerable. Because that's how much God wants connection with us. And that is good news, isn't it? 
God who does not force or threaten but walks the dangerous road of nakedness, neediness and vulnerability just because that road leads to our hearts. That is the road that leads to genuine connection and engagement between creator and creation. There seems to be a myth around that God wants to control everything. But by turning up as a baby, naked, needy and vulnerable, God blows that myth out of the water. God doesn't want control. God wants connection, relationship, love. The vulnerability of God is the light of the world because it shows just how much God wants genuine relationship with us. Just how much God was willing to risk to nurture this connection with us. The vulnerability of God is light for the world because it means we are never alone. God understands weakness. God has shared our weakness. So our own weakness, neediness and vulnerability don't isolate us from God, but rather they become the best place to meet God. And the vulnerability of God is light for the world because the restoration of our relationship with God through God's vulnerability sets a process in motion that will lead to the full restoration of all things, all our relationships with each other and with all creation. The naked, needy, vulnerable baby in that manger shows us just how we might continue the work of putting things right by breaking the dark power of shame that keeps us brittle and estranged <coughs> and revealing a path of vulnerability on which all things will be restored. I'll quote Brené Brown one more time. One of the greatest barriers to connection in, the, in our culture is, uh, let me start that again, one of the greatest barriers to connection is the cultural importance we place on going it alone. Somehow we've come to equate success with not needing anyone. Many of us are willing to extend a helping hand, but we're very reluctant to reach out for help when we need it ourselves. It's as if we've divided the world into those who offer help and those who need help. The truth is that we are all both. Even God, even God is both the one who gives help and the one who needs help. And so in the community that meets to worship such a God, we are made up of people who are both. We offer help to each other when needed and we are courageous enough to ask for help for ourselves whenever, um, when we need that. And when we do that, we offer an invitation to real connection, real community. This is light that shines in the darkness, light that shone out from that manger and continues to illuminate all we do today. So may you all walk in that light. And though your halos might not be completely visible around the table today at lunch and dinner, I know your light will be felt. I know your relationships will be transformed as you carry the light of Christ's vulnerability with you today and every day. Amen.